Let's talk about the state of crypto games, also referred to as Web3 games, blockchain games, GameFi, play to earn games in this current crypto winter. Delphi Digital quotes the market cap of GameFi at $6.15 billion on September 30th. While checking the top gaming tokens on CoinMarketCap, returns a valuation of $6.6 billion on November 18th. Regardless, there are only a handful of gaming tokens in the top 100, so the crypto gaming sector, at least those with tokens, has been suffering too. Things are looking better as far as on-chain activity is concerned. According to DappRadar, a full 48% of all on-chain activity comes from gaming in Q3 2022, which is more than double the number that DeFi has. This is further amplified by the CMC and Navic Gaming Report, which shows that the unique active wallets or UAW, although currently stagnating, is in a slow upwards long-term trend. Broken down by blockchains, most demand for games is on WAX. However, if we look at the supply of games, most games are actually built on the BNB chain, according to Binance Research. However, only 33% of crypto games are live, with many still in the development, beta, or alpha stages. And actually looking further into where players are actually playing, most crypto games are unsurprisingly on web browsers or mobile. Finally, the popular genres of crypto games are action, followed by some adventure, collectibles, strategy, and RPGs. But which games are players actually playing? Yet again, it's not easy to precisely define which games are the most popular, and particularly how many players are playing them. But Binance Research lists the top five games with the most active users in September of 2022. There is GameMeta, a Web3 gaming platform that brings Web 2 games into the blockchain, Alien Worlds, a metaverse game set in space, Benji Bananas, a hyper casual mobile game where players collect bananas, Solitaire Blitz, a casual card game, Splinterlands, a card collection game. Game Meta has seen a stellar rise, catapulting itself to the top spot with almost 2 million unique active users in September. However, the most popular games are not necessarily the most valuable ones. Although you can argue about which of those are actually crypto games and which are metaverses, and whether those two aren't in fact the same. Here's the top five by market capitalization. We have The Other Side, a metaverse by Yuga Labs, the team behind Board Ape Yacht Clubs and CryptoPunks, The Sandbox, a popular metaverse game which allows users to create and play games, Decentraland, a leading virtual world with different districts and user-owned plots, Axie Infinity, a play-to-earn pioneer, Steppen, the move-to-earn pioneer. Interestingly, the most played games are nowhere near the top five games by market cap when it comes to valuations. Even though metaverses are in the early stages of development and have have relatively lower active users, trading volumes for metaverse virtual land NFTs are down over 90%. Even if some of the bubble has popped, the market is still giving these projects plenty of breathing space considering their stage of development. But the two real games on this list, Axie and Steppen, are worth a second look given how popular they were at their peak of their powers. Axie Infinity experienced a meteoric rise. At its peak, the token was worth over $150, and its market cap was over $10 billion. However, with the onset of the crypto winter, these days, AXS trades below $10 and at a much more modest market cap of $900 million. Furthermore, the CMC and Navic gaming report, Navic posits that the unsustainable play to earn model is in demise with games moving to free to own or F2O model. Daily unique active wallets for Axie were down 86% in Q3 compared to Q2. Still, the team had its first Axie Con conference this year where they introduced their Land Project Kingdoms gameplay alongside other gaming features like socializing token gameplay, delegations, non-land owner gameplay, dungeons, and more. Steppen conquered the move to earn market in a flash. Well, Steppen created the move to earn market. But just like Axie in this case, the game is still popular, but the monthly active user count is down significantly. And that may be due to the rise of a formidable competitor in Sweatcoin. We covered the details of Sweatcoin previously, which has over 1.3 million active users and over 1.5 million transactions thus far. Unsurprisingly, the trend is down after the initial hype, and Sweat is suffering from the same kind of selling pressure most gaming or fitness tokens are suffering from. But it's probably not the last iteration of move to earn games that we've seen. The crypto games industry in 2022 is projected to outperform the amount in 2021 by a solid 100%. Most of these investments are seed rounds and pre-series, where crypto gaming attracts the most money out of any sector. And according to the block research, 35% of seed rounds and pre-series investments go to NFTs and gaming 
and that is almost triple the amount that DeFi gets. Meanwhile, Delphi Digital shared a few noteworthy funding deals in its September Gaming Insights overview. Metaverse Go, a Web3 gaming platform, raised $4.2 million in a seed round. Revolving Games raised $25 million across two rounds to build Battlestar Galactica. And the Mocha Brands raised $110 million, bringing up its valuation to $5.5 billion. Hadian, supported by EA, raised $30 million to build Metaverse infrastructure. Immortal Game raised $15.5 million to build a chess-focused game featuring NFTs. Vulcan Forge raised $8 million to expand its Web3 gaming platform and build a Metaverse game. GameFi's Achilles Heel, building a sustainable token model. There's no two ways to go about this. Crypto Games definitely has not figured out the tokenomics model for sustainable games. AXS is down more than 90%, and so are all the guild tokens that promise to build an entire field of employment around play to earn. But what's going wrong, and why is it so difficult to build a sustainable token model in a game? Well, Nat Elison has a fantastic essay on this called, Crypto Gaming is Broken, How Do We Fix It? And if you're really interested in crypto games, you should actually read the entire piece. For the lazy type, here are Nat's arguments summarized. Number one, NFTs set a bad precedent for games. NFTs are all about their floor price and the number going up, and that is the wrong frame for the games to be in. Number two, DeFi is set in a bad precedent for games. Gaming shouldn't be focused on making a passive yield from staking. Number three, most earnings are unsustainable. Many games actually have poor economic designs where more earnings increase earnings and thus increase selling pressure. Number four, costs are actually too high for game life cycles. Considering how long a games popularity lasts at best a few years, Web3 games are ridiculously overpriced. Number five, much of the work is bullshit. Play to earn is just clicking to actually click a few useless buttons without meaning or any fun involved. Number six, too much power for people and capital versus time. If you can afford buying a valuable NFT, you can make your initial investment back quickly, and this is unfair. Number seven, play to earn sets the wrong expectations for players. It shouldn't be play to earn, but play and earn. But what about the possible solutions? Well, the block research suggests that not all Web3 games need to have a token to begin with. For example, hyper casual games, think of Candy Crush, don't benefit from adding a token because their only hook is to make players come back to keep their streak. But without long-term incentives, the token will always be inflationary and thus sold immediately. Nate also gives several suggestions on how to fix Web3 gaming. Summarize like this. Number one, significantly reduce the cost to end Entry. Regular games cost $60 to $80, but Web3 games have NFT collections worth thousands. Number two, create limitations on the power of new capital. Games should actually have barriers for the rich to not have an unfair advantage or starting advantage. Number three, prioritize rewarding play, not clicking. Earnings should actually come from playing the game and not just by clicking buttons to earn. Number four, get rid of staking. Staking is a DeFi element that has no place in games. Number five is build a fun game. Games should actually be fun, you know? Number six is separate the external and internal economy as much as possible. Players should actually have to check the price of the token to actually decide what to do in the game. Number seven, obscure the ROI. Earning mechanisms are fine, but they should not be predictable. Number eight, reframe expectations around. Play and earn players should actually expect to play first and then earn second, not the other way around. Number nine is not limiting play. Time-based limitation should not stop the players from playing a fun game. Of course, there is a whole long tail of design mechanisms like how many tokens to include and which tokens can sync to build into the game. But armed with these suggestions, developers already have a long laundry list of things to improve. The CMC and Navic blockchain gaming report also echoes some of the most aforementioned points, adding that the crypto gaming sector has seen the transition from the unsustainable play to earn model across various stages to the free to own or F2O model. F2O dramatically lowers barriers to entry by offering NFTs for free and not gating game access with sometimes absorbently high NFT purchase prices. Navic actually believes that this could be an important catalyst in accelerating the mass adoption of crypto games. So the old crypto gaming is dead. Long live the new crypto gaming, or something like that. Gaming is still one of the most promising verticals for blockchains to actually break into the mainstream. The old models were nice to experiment with, but were never going to work out for the long run. And to be fair, a lot of new games do look promising, but have a long way to go before they can actually compete with legacy games. Many traditional gamers or gaming companies remain hostile to NFTs and crypto gaming concepts. They see as a quick cash grab by companies and a way of blockchain enroaching on someone else's turf without actually improving anything. And so far, they've actually been right about that. Still, keep an eye on the gaming space because it's not going anywhere anytime soon.